So in this video, I'd like to go through some examples of natural deduction. Now, I don't want to spend too much time discussing all of the little details, but all you need to know for this video is that natural deduction is basically a process which you can use to examine the validity of arguments. Now, in all of the examples that I go through, you could also use a truth table, but in some cases that can be equally complicated and depending on the nature of what you're trying to prove, you can end up with some really quite gigantic truth tables. And in some cases, using the principle of natural deduction can be a little bit more efficient, uh, but not always. So the basic idea is this, you're given some set of assumptions and a list of rules on how to manipulate those assumptions. And we can therefore use those to try and prove something. Now, there are quite a lot of rules, and in this video, I'm only going to look at three uh, rules in particular, and those rules involve a variety of symbols. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to be focusing on the and symbol, um, but there are other rules involving the or symbol, um, don't know why that happened, involving the or symbol, the not symbol, the implication symbol, and the if and only if symbol. But in this video, I want to focus on the and symbol, the conjunction symbol. So what are the rules involving AND? Well, the first rule is quite easy. It says the following. If you assume that the statement A is true, and you assume that the statement B is true, then you can deduce that the conjunction of the statements A and B is also true. For example, if A represents the statement that I have a cat, and B represents the statement that I have a dog, um, I have a cat, by the way, but not a dog, um, then I can deduce that I have a cat and I have a dog. And that sounds quite straightforward and I hope you won't be too worried by this rule. Now there's a particular way I want to write this rule. What I'm going to do is write it as follows. In the curly brackets on the left of this symbol, I'm going to write all my assumptions. In this case, my assumptions were just A and B. So I've written my assumptions inside these curly braces. Now this symbol here represents something called syntactic entailment. So you should read this as this set of assumptions syntactically entails this stuff. I don't really want to go into detail what this means precisely. In fact, it has some very precise uh, implications when you want to talk about the completeness and consistency of propositional logic. Um, but that's not what I want to talk about in this video. So you can sort of think about this as being a kind of bridge, if you'd like. On the left hand side, I've got all my assumptions. And on the right hand side, it's whatever it is I'm trying to prove. So for this case, all my assumptions were A and B, and what I wanted to prove was A and B, which I've written on the right hand side. Now the next two rules are basically uh, the same as each other, just in a slightly different order. Number two says the following. If I assume that A and B is true, so the conjunction of these two statements, then I can deduce that A is true. Now, what would this mean, for example? Now, suppose that A is the statement that I am happy, and B is the statement that the sun is shining. Now, if I am happy and the sun is shining, then surely it's true that I'm happy. It doesn't really matter that the sun is shining, but it's still true that I'm happy. Now, the way we write this rule is exactly the same way. I write my assumptions on the left-hand side, which in this case was the single assumption A and B, and I was able to deduce that A was true. And in exactly the same way, if I assume that A and B is true, so if I make exactly the same assumption, then I can also deduce that B is true. If I am happy and the sun is shining, then it's true that the sun is shining. And I write this in exactly the same way with my assumptions on the left and what I'm deducing on the right. Now let's use these three simple rules to do a few very basic examples. So the first example says this, if I assume that A and B is true, I want to deduce that B and A is true. Now you might be thinking this is pretty trivial and in fact it, qu it, it quite simply is because you can just use the truth table and see immediately that these two things are true. Or you can sort of use words, you could say, well, if A is true and B is true, then of course it's true that B and A is true. But how do we prove this using the principle of natural deduction? It's done in quite a cool way, and I'll show you how to do it. So I'm going to start by writing my assumption, A and B. And using my uh, third rule, I'm allowed to deduce, under this assumption, that B is true. 
So I haven't done anything special here. All I've used is my third rule. I'm also going to make the same assumption again, A and B, but instead of deducing B, I'm going to decide to deduce A. All I've used in this scenario is my second rule. So now what do I have? I've made the assumption A and B. I've made the assumption twice, which doesn't matter. I'm allowed to make the same assumption however many times I like. And I've deduced B is true and A is true. So now I can draw a line underneath these two things, because that's what I've deduced. And using my first rule, I can deduce that B and A is true. So all I've used is the first rule here, A, A is true and B is true implies A and B is true. And I was able to deduce this. So by setting up my example in a very particular way, I was able to switch the order of A and B. And this technique might be very useful for proving some harder problems. So now we come to an even more uh, ridiculous looking example. I want to prove that if A is true, then A and A is true. Now, obviously this looks uh, like something which we wouldn't want to spend much time looking at, but let's see if we can try to prove this statement using the principle of natural deduction. Okay, so if I assume that A is true, and it is, and if I also assume again that A is true, which I'm allowed to do, then I can draw a line underneath these two things and using my, uh, I believe it was my first rule up here, then I can deduce that A and A is true. So all I did was write out my assumptions twice to so be able to prove what was on the right hand side. So let's look at one final example. I want to assume that A and B is true and under that assumption, I want to prove that A and A is true. So how do I do this? Well, the first thing I want to do is, as usual, write out my assumption, A and B. And under this assumption, I am allowed to deduce that A is true. Now I can write exactly the same thing again. I can write my same assumption, A and B, and I'm allowed to deduce exactly the same thing. I can deduce using my, uh, my second rule, that A is true. I can now draw a line under these two things and deduce that the conjunction A and A is also true using one of my rules. So that's all I wanted to talk about. Um, next time we'll look at some more difficult tricks and more difficult examples involving a, more, uh, a wider variety of uh, propositional logic symbols. So in particular, I want to look at the OR rules next time and do a few examples involving those. So if you liked what you saw, please feel free to leave a like, uh, leave a comment, or even subscribe to my channel to help support my content. Uh, thank you.